Hi there, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I have a tutorial on how to make this really beautiful old time lace scarf and it's using the old time lace granny square motif that I did in my last tutorial and in this tutorial I'll show you how to join the motifs together using a crochet technique and also how you can make this little half square that you can put on each end so that it finishes with this fun shape and also how you can do tassels. And so you can see how this scarf looks where, while I'm wearing it and you can do a double wrap if you like. And so it's just a very pretty vintage looking scarf. So let's get started. So the yarn that I'm using for this project is a thrift store find and it is a number three lightweight yarn. I don't know the brand or what the fiber is. It's probably a rayon vicose cotton blend of some sort, but I'll have a written pattern in the description box below and I'll have a couple of suggestions of comparable yarns. And we're going to use a four millimeter G6 crochet hook, some scissors and a darning needle. So what you'll need uh, are several of the old time lace granny squares and I do have the video tutorial in the description box below and there'll also be a written pattern with this and in the written pattern will be the link to the video as well. And so I am using a total of 12 of these squares. You can use however many you like. You might want to make it longer. You might want to make it shorter, but I'm using 12 all together. And if you want to do with the little triangle at the bottom, then you will need two of these half squares. And that is in this video tutorial. Um, I'm going to do it after joining. You can find it at 10 minutes in the video, but we're going to start by joining the squares together. That will be the first step. And so whether you wanna use all square pieces or whether you wanna add these little half squares at the end is totally up to you. Either way, you'll join them in the same way. So let's do that next. Now you're going to take two motifs and you want to have the right side up and so the right side is where you have that little ridge around there and you can see the back is sort of a little more curly so you want to have right sides facing up and one above the other. And if you can find the knot where you fastened off you can have the fastening off knot in between the motifs. I can't actually find mine. But anyways, we're going to start with a slip knot and leave a fairly good sized tail so that you can darn in really well with that. Put that on your hook and you're going to join into a chain eight space with a slip stitch. So put your hook through this space, grab the yarn from behind, flip your tail over and do a slip stitch. Then you'll chain two and then you lay your motif down and yeah, you wanna do this on a flat surface. You'll take your crochet hook out, put it into the top motif from behind and then you'll grab the loop, pull that into the motif that way and then do a slip stitch. Whoops, there we go. Then you'll chain four and this is a little bit awkward, but you'll get used to it. And then you'll bring your chain down and you want to lay it so that the V stitch of the chain is facing up. And then you'll take your hook out again, put that into the first chain four space, grab the loop and pull it in into that space and do a slip stitch and then chain four, four, lay that towards the next chain four space, take your hook out, go into the next space, 
And again, with the V stitches facing up towards you flat, you grab the loop, pull it into that space and do a slip stitch. So you're just going to do a chain four and slip stitch that into each chain four space, zigzagging back and forth. Again, you wanna come down to the next square, lay that flat, pull that off your hook, put the hook in from behind and pull that into the chain four space and do a slip stitch. And so you'll work that all the way along, zigzagging back and forth until you get to this space here. And I'll see you there. All right, so I've just done my last chain four and going into the chain eight space, I'll do a slip stitch. And for, whoops, come on, there we go. And to join to the next corner, you'll just chain two. And then do the same thing. Take that off your hook, pull it in from behind, and do, whoops, and do a slip stitch. And you can do a chain one to fasten off if you have a slippery type of yarn, which I do. So I'm going to make sure to have that extra knot. Cut that off, pull that through. Whoops, there we go. And kind of snug that up. And then that knot, you can spin this around and pull it into the back. And that's where that knot will go. And next, I'll show you how to darn in your tail ends. So you can see here how that's created like a lacy join together. And you'll want to block this or hand steam it to lay it flat. And at the ends here, you want to fuss around a bit with the lace pieces. It slides because it's just slip stitched. So that goes that way. And then it goes this way. And you want to make it so that your outside edge is even as possible there. And in retrospect, I think these chain eight corners would have, be, would have been better as a chain seven. And I've already made all mine and I'm just finding there's this little bit of extra fabric here. And a way to deal with that is, I'll just pull that out a little bit more, is you can deal with that when you're darning in your tail end. So you can just gather it a bit if you've gone ahead and made these and have the same problem. So I'd make these a chain seven. What's happened is some of my chains are the right size because my tension was good and some are too loose. I was a little loosey goosey with my, my tension. So it sort of depends on your tension. So this is the right side up. So just put your darning needle on and flip that around. And here's the piece that's a little bit bulky. So I'll just darn in through that chain strand and I would darn in to this chain strand anyways because I want to get down into one of the corners there to darn in so just go through that chain and then just do a little bit of a gathering and you can just snug that up stitch you can just snug that up a little bit and pull it in and then you can work your way down into this corner here where we've got two clusters which gives a nice amount of fabric to darn into and so just darn in to this space here and so there's one direction and I sort of pull that out and then go back in the other direction and if you like you could put a knot in here if you like this yarn is quite slippery so I'm gonna actually just come back a third time. It's totally up to you. You can either knot it or do three passes back and forth. And then you can just cut your tail end off. And you can see how that sort of rectifies that little bit of extra fabric there. So that's how you join your squares together. 
and so you can go ahead and here on this side here I'll just adjust that just like that and that side is fine I don't have to gather it at all so join all your squares together and if you decide to do the half motif the half square I'll show you how to do this motif next. If you decide to do all squares, then you can forward to the section where I add the tassels. So we'll do the corner square next. Now for the half square, you'll start with a chain five and create a ring rather than a chain eight for the regular square. So then You'll start with a chain three and that counts as your first double crochet and then you'll do seven more double crochets into the ring. So you have a total of eight double crochets rather than 16 for the full square. So go ahead and do a chain three and seven double crochets and I'll see you at the end. Okay. So you have this nice half circle here. And now for the next round, we're wanting to create this same sort of ridge here of this ring. So to do that, it's a little bit different because you're going to be working into the back. So you're going to turn your work and chain five, and this counts as your first double crochet and chain two. Now you'll be going into the base of that stitch with a double crochet, so yarn over, and you want to pick up this back bump here at the base of the stitch. Well, it's the front bump, but it would have been the back bump in the uh, other square. And so you're just working into that, what would be the back bump, and then you'll pick up the stitch right on top of that. Um, so essentially, because you're working from the back, you're working into your back loop and your back bump, but you're doing it backwards, if that makes sense. So you'll do a double crochet into those two stitches. And you need to go into that very first stitch again so you have enough spaces at the end. So chain two, and then you'll do a double crochet going into the next stitch, picking up that, uh, what is your back bump, but it's facing you, and what would be your back loop, but it looks like a front loop, and do a double crochet. It's because we're working in rows rather than rounds. And then you do a chain two and you repeat that all the way along and I'll see you at the end. So coming to the end of row two, you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, double crochet chain two, but you'll still have your chain three from the beginning chain three to go into with a double crochet. So we'll do one more double crochet after that chain two, going into the third chain of that beginning chain three with a slip stitch, or sorry, a double crochet. There we go, and that's the end of row two. So turn your work and chain three. And so we're going to do this beginning three double crochet cluster. So instead of beginning with a chain two, you begin with a chain three. So you'll go into your chain two space and you'll begin that cluster. So begin your double crochet, but just pull through the two, first two loops only, yarn over, begin another double crochet into that same space, yarn over, pull through two loops. You'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And that's your beginning cluster. And then you'll chain three. And then going into the next chain two space, you'll work your three double crochet cluster. So yarn over and just complete half of that first double crochet. Do another double crochet, complete just half of that. Do the third one and complete just half of that. You'll have four loops on your hook as before and yarn over and pull through all four loops. And then chain three. 
So you'll continue to do your clusters in all the chain two spaces with a chain three in between. Great. So coming to the end of row three, you'll have eight clusters with three chains in between, but you won't do three chains for the last one. You'll just finish with the eighth cluster in the last space. So now for row four, you'll turn your work and chain eight or chain seven if you decide to uh, do a smaller corner space. And so now we'll do the first three double crochet cluster, not into the chain three space, but back into the top of that first three double crochet cluster. So yarn over, go into that obvious space of that cluster and work a three double crochet cluster into the top of that three double crochet cluster from the previous row. And there we've got the four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all four loops. And then you'll chain four. And then you'll work a single crochet chain four into the next space into that chain three space. So single crochet and chain four. And then we'll do that two more times. So single crochet, chain four. And then into the next space, a single crochet and a chain four. And now you'll be working your corner as you did with the uh, square square. And you'll be working that into your uh, third, into the fourth chain three space, your work, your corner. So you'll do a three double crochet cluster, chain seven or eight, and a three double crochet cluster and a chain four. And then you'll do your single crochet chain four, single crochet chain four, single crochet chain four, and I'll come back and meet you there. All right, so it's coming along nicely here and you can see the corner there with your chain four and then your single crochet chain four and repeat that two more times. And then what we have here is a three double crochet cluster from the previous row and we're going to work into the top of that. So there's a chain three space there, which is perfect to work into. And you're going to work into that chain three space with a three double crochet cluster. Working into the top of that uh, cluster from the previous row. And pull through all four loops. And then you'll chain eight or seven if you decide to do that smaller corner space. Depends on your tension. So there's eight and we'll finish this. You need to squish that over and there's the third chain of that beginning chain three and you'll go in with a slip stitch. It'll be a little bit hard to get into. You have to really squish that over but going into that third chain and do the best you can to get into that space and picking up two stitches and you'll do a slip stitch into that last stitch and then a chain one to fasten off. I don't have my scissors. I'll be right back. There we go. And there you go. Tighten that up. And then the right side will be the side where this little ridge is here. And so then of course you want to block that as you do the other squares. Uh, but there you go, there's your half square. You can darn in your tail ends and that'll work very nicely with the square shape. So there you go. All right, so I have all my motifs crocheted together. I can't fit it all in on the camera, but 
you can see how nicely that looks. And then I just use the hand steamer to steam the joints nice and flat. And then I have my little corner pieces here and I've done the tassels on this side. I haven't trimmed them yet, but I'll show you how to put on tassels next. So all you need is a jig of some sort and some scissors and a crochet hook. So this is seven inches. You can make your tassels any length you like. This is just a little paint sample that I uh, created. I was trying to make my own crackle paint. It didn't really work, but anyways. So use a jig. Uh, you could use a cracker box or any piece of cardboard. And I'm using five strands of yarn per tassel. You can use as many as you like, as few as you like. You can make them as long as you like or as short as you like. Tassels are very much a custom thing. So I'm just going to do five wraps. Um, but here I'm putting a tassel in every other space here. So I'm doing five sets of tassels. So you need a total of 25 strands per side if you're doing it this way. So you just cut your tail there. I'll just flip it over here and just snip it at the bottom. And then you have a nice set of tassel strands. So then you want to line them up so they're nice and even like that. And where I'm putting the uh, tassels is uh, the very corner space here, this space here, the center piece, this space here, and the corner point there. And it, so all you do is line up your strand. You wanna go in from the back so that your knot will face uh, the right side up. Grab your strands from behind Bring that through the space and take your hook out. Then you want to line them up and make sure they're nice and even at the end here. Make them as even as possible like that. And then you'll just put your thumbs in that center and pull the tails from behind and snug that up. And just trying to keep it all as even as possible just like that. And that's how you put your tassels on. And tassels do tend to come undone. So you could use some fabric glue up at the knot here and put a little bit of glue on there to prevent it from coming undone. So you'll put those in all those places. Um, if you want, you could do more of a fringe, just a series of single strands. So you can do it any way you like. And then once you have them done, you want to lay them out flat and they're going to be a little bit longer because they're on a longer chain. And rather than cutting them at an angle, you like that, what you wanna do is just cut each tassel straight across and make each one uh, nice and straight and then go to the next one and cut that a little bit shorter and just taper each strand like that. Even it out nicely. And, and I'm just eyeballing this. And because your strands will all fall sort of differently, they'll change position. So if you try to taper within the strand, they'll always be a little bit uneven. And then this one ended up being quite long, so I'll cut that a little shorter. And again, I'm just eyeballing this. And there we go. And they all kind of taper that way. I sure hope that's on camera because <laughs> if it's not, I'll have to film it all over again. So that's how you do your tassels. All right, so here both sides are done. And this would even be fun if you put some beads on the end of these tassels, that would be very cool as well. And of course I can't get the whole scarf in the camera, but you can see what a, such a beautiful and funky scarf this is. So here's a picture here of me wearing it. And 
Uh, you can wear it with a double wrap or a single wrap. It's just a fun, vintage, hippie, boho look. It's not a warm scarf. It's more of a decorative scarf. Um, and it would just be really nice with like a simple uh, black classy outfit or something neutral. It would just look fabulous with that. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more creative and inspiring videos. We'll see you next time.